Greetings everyone and welcome into the Hourglass. Welcome it if you are new, it's great to have each and every one of you here today. All right. So we have some exciting energies playing around in the cosmos lately. Have you been feeling it? We do have this full moon in Gemini, full moon lunar eclipse actually. So it's a very powerful energy to get rid or cleanse yourself of anything that you no longer feel like you resonate with, anything that you have outgrown. And this could be fears, this could be impatientness, this could be codependency to a relationship or an outcome. It's whatever you feel it's stifling you and causing anxieties and some type of, um, you know, it's just stressing you out. It's time to get rid of it. Write it down on some brown paper or brown paper bag, as close to as natural as you could get, and burn it away into the moonlight. You could also do some moon bath as well tonight to regulate those hormones. Those are just few activities and rituals you could try out tonight if you're interested in it, if you're being called to. So I want to see how is this full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini is going to affect uh, the collective and uh, any type of uh, connections that we may be having. That's really important to us. So it could be connections to uh, your significant other, family, to your own selves as well, your higher selves. I just want to get some Palo Santo going because I love this thing. Really do love it. I love how it makes my lungs clear being that I have asthma. I'm very asthmatic. So the smoke, it really, um, it's very light. It's very like citrusy and I love it. So I'm just going to like, I have cleared the space and cleared the cards and I'm ready to go. I hope you guys are too. So we're going to start off um, with a darker deck. I want to say what is, I want to see what's being clear, what's being cleared away or, um, you know what? Let me rethink that. Let's see what we're holding on to as a collective. Now, it may or may not resonate. It may not be the video for you today, but you're welcome to come back at a later date or a later time or when you're in a better spirit to digest what we're about to go through. This is all channeled general messages, so all signs are welcome, but I will be calling out any sign that jumps out to me that feels really strong, all right? Uh, and maybe a season, it may be the element that you're in. It does not have to resonate with your sun sign. We have multiple signs, uh, zodiac signs in our birth chart, all right? All right, so time and energy is fluid, and we all have free will, all right? So... Let's see what's about to jump out the cards. This is a very darker deck. I use this deck to do shadow work as well, but I just want to see what we are holding on to as a collective. Mm. We have fragmentation, and this is like a fairy. Some of you may be into fairies as well. We have, I'm just going to get one card because this deck is, um, it really heightens your intuition it's something that needs to be studied so i'm not going to pick too much cards let me just see if i'm in camera here let's see what's going on awesome sauce all right so we have the number 27 27 may be very significant for you two plus seven is nine so nine talks about clarity it talks about just before the finish line or setting your foot off on those finish lines you guys i do have some um fire meditation going in the background so if that's kind of like interrupting the scene i do apologize but i do need it to focus all right i've been working with fire for the past few months i transitioned from water to fire so i just feel like it's needed for me all right so i hope you understand all right so fragmentation so the quotation is a statement that goes with this card reads when rage is projected inward destruction joins confusion and we break so this card talks about anger as well we do see that cup moon i like to call it the cup because you know it has that uh fork lore or that beautiful story about the water uh, i think it's before springtime or strawberry season where the blessings or the the showered blessings would fall in this cup and when the moon turns upside down that water would come down and you know strawberries would blossom i think that's how it go don't quote me but it does have a beautiful story about that cup moon i like it it's like a chalice right so i'm feeling like as a collective we've been holding on to a lot of confusion and a lot of destructive possibly dysfunctional habits that 
we're tied into this could have been learned behavior this could be ancestral uh i almost said ancestral traditions that may have been passed down but now it's causing a fragmentation it's causing coldness it's causing some sort of break or crack in the spirit so we, we are holding on to this fragmentation of um pain of nothingness and it's time we clear that out with this full moon in gemini what do you think and this could be broken relationship feeling like you're yourself or broken you know you're not broken honey you're just bent a bent out of shape is what i'm hearing it's time to remold yourself it's time to rewire ourselves as a community here on the hourglass hello <laughs> so again we're going back to the number nine some of you may be seeing nine, 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 ninety nine or nine zero nine. Those are all like codes that you need to look up because your ancestors, your spirit guides, they're trying to communicate with you through a different frequency of numbers. It's all frequency, honey, colors, numbers, sound. It's all frequency. It's all vibrations that's trying to communicate with you. So do yourself some spirit homework and look up those numbers. And let's go back to nine. I'm seeing clarity. So as a collective, we're, we're seeing things clearer and clearer of things that are shattering our spirit, our soul. That's making us feel broken. Some of us are into solitude because of this bluish gray color i feel like there's solitude that's needed be careful you're not putting yourself in isolation all right but there's solitude to almost complete a phase here so there's completion there's a completion phase before moving on to a higher level okay so let's go let's keep going all right i just want to see if there's anything so we're going to keep in mind that quote i'm going to repeat it again it says when rage is projected inward destruction joins confusion and we break so there's a breaking point for someone here and this could feel like someone that you're romantically involved with as well but we're about to see um let's get into the Norman deck uh these are decks that i use uh for very dark shadow work energy. So like I said, um, this deck is not to be played with. I only focus or study one card of a, of, for like a week or so at a time, all right? Because it's so in depth. It, every time I look at it, it's something new. So we do have some wings here. So I've been seeing wings as well as feathers, but it's just wings. So I'm definitely feeling that somebody's starting to uh, rediscover their wings, rediscover that they have the ability to fly above negativity as well. So that's some good energy. So this full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini is going to bring out this balance of the yin and yang energy within self. We all are looking outward for this yin and yang energy, but we need to deal with things that are happening inward so we could flow better with the connections on the outside, if that makes sense. We have this sun card here, and let me tell you about this beautiful sun. The first thing I heard was all would be illuminated. So we went from a very uh, gloomish, a gloomy blue-gray type of color to this bright orangey red this could also feel very powerless to what's being illuminated so as a collective whoever it resonates with a lot of us are starting to feel powerless or even left behind some abandonment i feel like worry is in the sun the sun's face or facial expression that's going on here we also have the number 31 three plus one equals four so there's a need for faith in stability within self for security within self it's time to get in touch with the inner parts of yourself the inner sides the inner aspects whatever that may be so this full moon lunar eclipse is going to highlight or illuminate that inward uh situation or the destruction or the chaos that's causing this fragmentation this brokenness all right so a lot of people are going to be seeking help uh with the sun card that could seek out illumination truth as well this is a very successful card overall so it's all about self-absorbed as well for some of you so you may be getting in contact with people that are very self-absorbed and again that's reflecting that's shining the light back on things that you need to take care of because a lot of time we attract people that reflect or mirror back to us what we need to take care of all right. So for some success, may be causing fragmentation, maybe causing success, uh, maybe causing chaos in the brain. So there's an obsession around success. There's a set. Uh, 
obsession around happiness. All right. And when, when I say obsession, I'm feeling like there's a need to, to, to grasp that, to grasp that. I can't speak today for some reason. Maybe it's something going on with my, um, it's like my brain is moving faster than my mouth. <laughs> I'm seeing the number six here as well. So some of you may be seeing a lot of sixes. We also have the ace of pentacles going on here that could talk about a new financial beginning, some sort of lump sum of money or small amount of money or abundance is slowly coming towards you. All right. So if you've been feeling broken, the sun is about to break that up. It's about to lighten that fog. You get what I'm saying? All right. Hmm. So we're already starting off the reading with an ace of pentacles, but you have to grasp it. You have to be diligent about bringing that energy towards you. You get what I'm saying? So some of you may be a visionary as well. Some of you may be sun bath, sun bathing, soaking up all of that energy from the sun, that potent energy. And it's like in that sun bath, you could also like not look directly in the sun, close your eyes and then face towards the sun so you could ignite or you could warm your third eye or your stargate chakra, all right? And that's going to bring some visions to you. So be prepared to get in your journal as well, all right? Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. We have the anchor, brilliant. So the anchor is about stability. First thing that came to mind is stability in your life that's coming up. This could be long-term energy as well. This could also speak about um, I'm seeing the pelvis area. So that could be the sacral chakra as well. It's talking about sharing and reliability. So this is what we're, this is what the collective is wanting. Security, stability, practicality in this anchor. We have three plus five is eight. Eight is a very, is a very open-minded number. It's the infinity, it's authority, it's abundance, it's progress. It's moving forward. Somebody has adapting or whoever it resonates, adaptability is needed. When you, when this truth or when this burst of energy comes towards this, because it's almost like some of you needed to be broken, broken down, or something needs to be broken open or cracked open for this, this energy to come in now. I'm seeing like gold. I'm seeing like gold filling some type of crack. So some of you are getting into this gold energy, this golden aura, beautiful, becoming stable, secure, safe within self. That's the whole mission of this full moon, uh, lunar eclipse in Gemini, releasing things to become more stable in oneself. We have the nine of swords energy. So there's a little bit of, I'm hearing hallucinations. There could be a lot of stress surrounding this period right now. The energies are fluctuating. We have a lot of scorpionic energy mixed with that Sagittarius with Gemini. So it's all about facts, wisdom, questioning uh, the philosophy that you were raised on, digging deep with that Scorpio, feeling sexually charged, feeling sexually needed, feeling sexually clean. It's a lot of fluctuation and that's okay. You need to know that that's okay. All right. It's okay to experience that because I don't want you to be feeling like, oh, I'm too, I'm too anxious. I'm, I'm full of anxiety. This is not going to work. It's part of the process. You just need to control yourself, control those thoughts that's causing me to feel broken. You're not broken, honey. You're not a broken toy. You're not a broken crayon. You get what I'm saying? All right, so I'm still working with some smoky quartz. Those of you that knows the benefits, go ahead and comment. I will be sure to pin it just to help the community get familiar with what the properties or the benefits of working close with the smoky quartz. It's my go-to crystal. I know for some of you, you like that clear quartz or the rose quartz, but the smoky quartz is my go-to. All right, so let's keep going. I'm going to try to scoot my butt up to, the, to my arm. Um, manifestation station. I hope I'm not bumping and shuffling, shifting stuff here, but yeah, I hope you guys like my new setup. I thought, I thought I would just bring some new energy to the channel. All right. And you should be doing that as well. Move around some stuff, add some color to your altar, to your manifestation station, to your study space, your sacred space, add some light, add some fire, you know, candles are the pet fires, right? <laughs> 
All right, so somebody's adapting to some situations here. There could be a lot of talking or gossip. Gossip could be another um, dysfunction or causing chaos in some of y'all's lives. It's like the need to always know or see what's going on. This could be self-absorbed that's causing this gossip as well. I'm seeing the emperor a lot as well. So there's a need for structure and clear vision. Do not abuse your power. Do not abuse your status. All right. Something is going on with power and status and authority. Hey, OK, so I'm hearing that somebody may be overwhelmed with always having to be the authoritative or leader or, or leadership role. Hey, and it's like they need to get out in the sun. They need to sunbathe or sunbath. Hey, some of you are going to collect a reward soon for some great work or spirit work you have been doing, we have the four of pentacles. So with the four of pentacles, I'm hearing build a, a sturdy or, okay. So I'm hearing some of you are in this building boundaries phase. You're, you're getting stable or firm in your boundaries. And for some, you could be perceived as selfish of very self-absorbed, but hello, it's always going to have critics, all right, with no credentials coming in to say some shit. That's what I felt like gossip is going to be circulating around you because you're putting up a very firm boundary. These naysayers, these weak minded individuals are going to try to break that down. All right. They're trying to pick apart what you have going on. What is your strength? What is in your reservoir? Do not go into that nine of swords where you, you let these people or these situations cause you anxiety. Pull down, pull down to that trigger and write out what is causing this anxiety. It might not be as big as you think it is. Wings, fairy wings. I'm seeing angel wings. Angels in the past was depicted of four wings, not the two that we normally see. Angels had four wings. You need to look that up and see how that resonates with your spirit work or your spiritual homework. All right, so I'm going to see what's going on. What's becoming clearer and clearer to me being that we have the sun? What's, being, what's becoming clearer and clearer as a collective here on the hourglass? Let's clear this deck. We have, uh, you may be dealing or you may be in the age of 31 to 35 and you may be a little bit older. You may be an age gap between you and someone of 27 years. Some of you may be in a very religious or some type of job, a tradition, family oriented for 27 years, 27 years. And all you have been, it was in this anxiety, energy, anxious, stressed. Something is haunting something here. We have haunted spirits here. What is becoming clearer and clearer here? All right. So I'm going to cover the deck. <laughs> all right. So we have death. Interesting. So I channeled some messages last night around three. We have the six of swords. We have a lot of mental energy mixed with emotions. Hey, so this could be fleeting emotions. Maybe it comes in waves, but what I'm seeing is somebody's it's time to give yourself a fresh start with the six of swords. It's time to move away from some type of mucky quicksand type of situation. It's something that grabs you by your heel and it pulls you down slowly. It creeps up on you and it's time to kind of like navigate your own boat. It's time to navigate your, put those sails up. Some of you need to drop anchor in your soul. You know, drop anchor on those stable boundaries and keep pushing forward. Use your actions. Actions speak louder than words. With the death card showing up, this could be a spiritual death that some of you are dealing with. Again, I mentioned in previous videos, a lot of us are experiencing death in the families, death on the news, death that's close by. I'm sorry to be so dramatic about the death part. But a lot of us as a collective are experiencing these deaths and what it's doing to us, it's causing us to um, have this not only a rude awakening, bittersweet moments, very sorrow, a lot of sorrow here. That could be the brokenness here as well, that shattering or the cracking of one's spirit or soul. But guess what it's doing? It's illuminating, it's highlighting the cycle of life of how precious it is, of how we should be cherishing ourselves as treasure, as the gold, as the most highest gold. 
This is where the stability and the, the safety, I almost said structure comes in as well. So with the death card, some of you may be clinging to something that's very familiar. And what you're doing is you're dragging out, you're prolonging a, a, a major. So for some of you, it's an epic transformation in your life. Some of you are holding on so tight to what is familiar that is causing your anchor to slow you down. Some of you have rooted yourself in a belief system, in a tradition, in an expectation that's dragging you. It's slowing down your pace. For some of you, you're in a rite of passage and your ancestors is breathing life into you. They're sending you signs. I was sharing with my mom earlier this morning about a baby moth that actually flew into my mask high daytime in Walmart's parking lot. I was trying to, you know, secure my mask and a baby moth was just, sw it was just gracefully moving and it, I saw it coming straight for me, but it was like in slow motion, but fast motion at the same time. And it flew in the side of my mask. And when I, you know, unlatched the one side of my, um, sh my, um, the strings around my air, it just gracefully floated out of my mask, a small baby moth. You know, and I just got confirmation, and this was like weeks ago. I just got confirmation that it symbolized ancestors, my ancestral lineage that's coming from West Africa to the Caribbean, because I'm from the Caribbean, big up to all my Caribbean family. You know, the West Indies, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Antigua, Bermuda, Barbados, all them stuff, all them islands, all those people. You know, and everywhere around the world, a lot of you are getting signs from your ancestors and it's time to be open to it. Just as long as you protect yourself and you call in both known and un unknown ancestors that mean you well, that are here to protect you, that is here to guide you to rediscover who you are through the root chakra or the ancestral seat which is the bottom of the spine. You get what I'm saying? So some of you are on that rite of passage and you're receiving a lot of things that's causing your mental gears to move. Now we have the page of cups could talk about listening to your intuition, learning from your intuition, this intuitive guidance. You get what I'm saying? This could feel very much in the third eye chakra being receptive, but still centered about this subtle energy, this wisdom, pondering on how to take action here with the page of cups. Some of you are already moving forward. You're already being gravitated towards that rite of passage, but you're clinging on to something that's familiar here. And some of you could be avoiding an ending here to a situation because you hate to be alone. All right. Maybe for some of you, you've been alone for a very long time and it's like you're putting up with mess. You're putting up with things that's causing shatters. It's causing fragmentation in your spirit, in your soul. And things are being ha highlighted for you with the sun. Let's go. You guys talk about this death. What is this death about? I'm hearing peace to you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Okay, so peace be with you and also with you. So some of you may be Cartlick religion head that's watching. We have the seven of pentacles. So some of you are waiting. Some of you may be waiting, knowing that something is going to end. Something, some type of transformation, an old way is ending. And some of you may be just waiting to see the fruits of your... Uh, the seeds of your labor begin to grow. It's a uh, energy of nervousness, but also surrendering for some of you. Okay. So it has to do with growth. I'm seeing the sun and the tree with the seven of pentacles. So it's almost like the truth or the sun energy is going to cause some growth here. There's a lot of scorpionic energy. We have Libra, Aquarius, Gemini. We have water elements, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer with earth, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. All right. So it's almost like, um, try not to take the change in or the fluctuation energy so personally, let it flow through you because it's highlighting different parts or aspects of yourself. And this is causing transformation. I don't know what I'm seeing a kitchen. Uh, what is that? Chef Ramsey, Hell's Kitchen. Oh, 
Okay, so something about a cake. So some of you may have been praying about a situation and the Most High has given you the ingredients. Now you have to put it together. Now you have to follow the recipe and build this, this cake to bake it. And you have to be patient when it goes into that oven, when it goes into the sun energy, right? So this is patience waiting for your fruits of labor or your win for something had to be revealed, but you're not taking it so personally or you're trying to convince yourself you're not taking it so personally. Okay, so some of you are already aware of this new start, this new beginning. Some of you are already giving yourself this new beginning by following a very spiritual, sacred, I'm hearing sacred waters, sacred emotions. Okay, so some of you are learning how sacred you really are, huh? Okay. Sacred energy. Hmm. It's like some of you really have... Okay, 10 of cups. So some of you are really reaching for the best fruit. Hey, I feel like some of you are willing to climb the tree for the best fruit. You're tired of picking this, the low fruit. Hey, because it's easy, because it's convenient, because it's familiar with the death. Some of you are willing to elevate. Some of you are willing to as, uh, ascend to get the best fruit. Hey, the highest expression of self. And that's going to bring you to 10 of cups. Some of you are returning home to yourselves through this rite of passage, rediscovering. We have the bees here with the honey. Some of you could be studying the deities or you have confirmation that you are the daughters and sons of Uchung or Ushung. It's a lot of honey. So some of you may be gravitating towards bees. You're gravitating around oranges, orange to eat. Start eating, orange, uh, start eating fruits and vegetables that... Um, signifies the color of chakra you want to clay. So we have Ushung or Uchung here with the honey and the bees. Bring sweetness to your life. Bring be yourself. Some of you are getting confirmation that you are daughters of Ushung or Uchung. Beautiful. We also have Yamaha here as well with the water. So fresh water, fresh lakes, sweet waters. Okay, sweet sacred waters. Some of you have the frog totem or the toad totem where you're, you're navigating between the emotional and the, the physical aspects of yourselves. You're trying to navigate that to bring some type of love and energy, emotional balance in your life. And this could be something to do with romance or, again, love connections between yourself and others. So this lunar eclipse, what's become clearer and clearer that you need to start moving in your ancestral energy. The sun energy, the truth. Also, I'm feeling a little bit of playtime with the sun and the ten of cups. It's time to have, f it's like, you know, it's time to have new family um, traditions, hey? Or some of you are carving new family traditions by breaking a lot of these ancestral karma. You're the cycle breakers, all right? So go on, big up yourself. You guys, I appreciate the love and the support that you show the hourglass of the cycle breakers on the rise. You guys are beautiful. You guys emanate this bright light on this channel and i'm so grateful for each and every one of you that has found this platform all right you're my soul family Ow. yeah so there's a growth in family traditions and it's starting with you some of you are rediscovering yourselves hey by doing some shadow work we have the queen of pentacles that showed up to the top that's why I covered the deck before because I was not finished, but she's showing up twice. And we have the King of Pentacles. Now with the Queen of Pentacles in, an, in a positive light, let's say this Queen of Pentacles is following his or her, um, his or her intent, uh, not intentions, but intuition. So in the Queen of, uh, the Queen of Pentacles energy, this is a queen. This is a feminine energy. That's all about patience. All the Queens have some sort of patience. And I'm feeling like you guys are cultivating, you guys are ascending, you're taking it step by step. You're moving up the ladder in some type of rite of passage that's bringing you some type of emotional fulfillment. Some of you literally nail a coffin shut and you buried it for good. I'm hearing ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So some of you may be showing out, and I'm not saying that you're being a show off, 
but it's showing out in your aura. It's reflecting in your soul that you are cultivating. You're moving past things that were was familiar, but it was also causing a lot of obstacles, a lot of dysfunction, a lot of destruction, and a lot of chaos. We're moving away from that, giving ourselves a new beginning. So what's becoming clearer and clearer in this full moon lunar eclipse? That as a collective, we're cultivating. We're working with what we have to help others as a team. The queen of pentacles is that mother. It's that grounded, down to earth. This could even be handcraft goods as well, or home goods. Some of you are getting into the home goods uh feel or trend as well you're following your intuition your intuition is guiding you suddenly and is leading you to this ten of pentacles of this true love's energy for oneself first and foremost some of you may be dealing with a king of wands or you was in that king of wands energy in the past leo sagittarius aries could be very self-centered and self-absorbed you know, this go-getter's energy. But right now, if you're dealing with a person that was in that fire energy or is in that fire energy, I'm feeling like they're kind of like distracted. Their body is facing you. So they may have like physical... Um, let me see what time it is on this day. So this person may be physically attracted to you or their body may be drawn or magnetized to you, but their mind is being distracted or pulled in a different direction. They have other things on their mind. And what that could be is a form of action, a form of cultivating their own power in their world. So there's a need. If this is a romantic relationship, I'm feeling like the both of you may be on a, a rite of passage. So this person may be going through their own healing and clearing with the nine. They may be having their own clarity in their own world. And the both of you may be going through some sort of spiritual death. The both of you may have experienced a death in the family or there's a rebirth here. There's a, there's a, there's a birth, there's a death, and there's a rebirth here. All right. Both of you may be giving each other or giving yourselves a new start, but the love is still here. And I feel like this person may want to reach out or they're going to reach out to the queen of pentacles in a very romantic way, in a very stable, could also feel like a slow and steady pace that you guys are going on towards each other. So there is definite love between this king of wands and this queen of pentacles energy. No matter what sign you may be in, this may be just the elements you guys are working with at the time. All right. Some of you, this person could be waiting to see what your next action may be, being that you may be going some going through some sort of transition as well. But there is peace. So maybe in the past, someone here was kind of like uh, resisting a change. And I'm feeling like some sort, some sort of peace is washing over this person could be surrender as well. So this full moon in Gemini lunar eclipse is going to wash over somebody. Somebody's going to surrender. They're going to make peace or they're just going to allow some sort of change to happen. All right. This person may have had a problem with instant results or instant gratification. We saw the four of pentacles show up earlier. This person may have had, um, attachments to the mundane and this was what was causing resistance to a change to get to this true love energy to get to this emotionally balanced energy of the ten of cups so it's like this person is following you but at the same time they kind of go into a transition they kind of venture off so this person may be on and off or they're around you, but they hold back a lot. And it's because they're going through some sort of transition or transformation themselves. Death seems to reign heavily here between this king of wands and this queen of pentacles energy. So a lot of things may be coming to a spontaneous ending. Because with death, you can't predict when something is going to be over end it just suddenly happens and that may be causing this person or you take it how it resonates to just let it go it's almost like somebody was trying to abuse their power with being self-absorbed this authority this energy holding back you know giving little at a time or giving what uh, one wants to retain power or authority in a situation. But then we have the death with this peace, the peace rose or the white rose. It's almost like it's time to let go and this person is very, they're okay with that. 
So let's get some ancestral um, energy going on here. This was actually a gift to the, the channel from my mom. I think it's called Spirit Messages. I'm not too sure. I had this deck a long time. This is one of my first decks I work with. So we're about to see what doors are being open. What doors are starting to be open here? And I definitely feel it's this Ten of Cups. So if we were going through a time where we were going through dysfunction, destruction, chaos, all of these elements that we were holding on to because it was familiar, but it was causing the light to come in about these habits. So let's see. The Seven of Pentacles, it's almost like be patient, gardener. Be patient. It's almost like the fruits of your labor. You're going to see that, but you have to have patience. We have hello from heaven. All right. So some of you are seeing pennies. We see the dragonfly. Some of you are experiencing feathers out of nowhere. We have the rose hair as well. Some of you may be seeing signs and synchronicities that are attached to roses and butterflies. And it says hello to heaven. Your loved ones in the spirit world want to connect with you. That's the six of swords, breathing that life into you. They know you have been thinking of them and they're sending you signs and symbols to show you how much they love you, to prove they're with you at this time. So on that rite of passage, what's helping you to be emotionally sound or emotionally stable to adapt is your, your um, ancestors, your spirit guide from the spirit world. Remember, they're their eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the ears of you in the spirit world. They could see things. They could hear things that you're not aware of. So they're always here to guide you. And I want to say big up to all my ancestors, my spirit guides that work with me around the clock, even when I'm being stubborn, even when I want to take things into my own control. They always have a way of snapping me back into line. So I just want to say I acknowledge both known and unknowns, all my ancestors that mean me well. I smile onto you and I'm open to the mission. I'm open to rediscovering the mission that you have for our lineage. So I smile in acknowledgement of my ancestors and my spirit guides. Hey. All right, so let's get one more card. That was a beautiful message. So some of you are actually hearing the whispers now. You're actually paying attention to those whispers that you may have been hearing as a child, as a young adolescent in the Page of Cups. You always had that, that whisper, that voice. But again, things distracted you. Some of you, this fire sign is going to send you a message, all right? They know that you're busy. They know that, you know, and I feel like they want you to know how busy they are too, but they're thinking about you. It's like they want to have this happy home or this happy life, but the rite of passage is needed. There's a lot of things that really needs to be let go of in the death card. It's like giving myself permission to let go of a lot of things so I could ascend, so I could be this highest version, this better version that you may deserve, all right? That's what I'm getting from this collection of combinations of cards. Okay, so we have ancestral wisdom. <laughs> We are your ancestors and we love you. We walk the earth many years before you. We are, we ask you at this poignant time, which is a sad time or a dull time, monkey time, to learn and grow from our past experiences. You are our legacy and we will keep on helping you as we continue to evolve here in the spirit realm or the spirit world. So like I'm saying, you guys are connecting heavily with your ancestral wisdom, with your ancestors, and it's time for you to be open to it. It's time for you to let go of things that are causing you a fragmentation, a brokenness in your mind and your spirit and your soul. All right, this is the heart chakra. We did see the yellow. The yellow could talk about the solar plex as well. You know, really being confident and uh, secure in the things that you're seeing. All right, feel that force. Feel that Focus on the energy of creativity. Focus on the energy of determination. All right? So I hope you guys did enjoy this reading. If you did, go and big up yourself in the comment box below. It was an honor to deliver this message today, especially with this full moon in Gemini. Happy birthday to all Sagittarians in the house. It's still Sagittarian season, so we are expanding. We're in the spirit of expansion, of questioning these philosophies, of researching, all right, of facts, of wisdom. And with that Gemini energy, letting our inner self have fun doing it, all right? That's the flow of things, to add fun, to add joy to the process so we could flow through. 
all right? So yeah, go and big up yourself if you're happy to be here on the Hourglass. And I'll see you guys in another channel message. Thank you guys for your generous tips to the free readings here as well. And I'll see you guys in another channel message. Chat to you guys later. Ciao.